Welcome to 4.2 and we are going to apply congruence and triangles. Apply congruence and triangles. Our essential question is how do I identify congruent figures? We've been talking about congruence for a while. Now we're going to apply it to triangles and triangles finally we're able to actually do some different shapes uh, here or in particular different kinds of triangles and specifically looking at congruence. You will remember that congruence means same shape and same size. Same shape and same size. And the symbol that we use is an equal sign with a squiggle on top of it. In contrast to, <clears throat> or not complete contrast, but uh, to uh, the concept of two shapes that are similar. We've talked about that also and the symbol for similar is a just one squiggle and the concept or the the principle for similar is same shape so same idea as for congruence same shape except instead of being same size like it is for congruence when it's similar it's same shape yes but they're proportional sides proportional sides. We've talked about that before. We're going to emphasize that again in the future. I just wanted to connect similar with congruent. Okay, so we get to use our my cool triangles here. And so in this situation, uh, do we have congruent triangles? And obviously uh, these two triangles are congruent. This guy has an orange one. That doesn't, that's not the same shape, same size. And you see here that even though the orientation is different, yet we do have same shape, same size. All we have to do is change the orientation, and I guess that would be a rotate it, right? Through a transformation, we could rotate this and then translate it and put it on top. And you can see that one triangle maps on top of another triangle exactly. And so therefore, they are congruent. Same shape and same size. And in two congruent figures, all of the parts, not just some of the parts, that's what I meant by this guy over here. <clears throat> so are these two shapes congruent? Well, I do have one pair of sides that are congruent, another pair of sides that are congruent. Is that sufficient? No way, Jose. You have to have all three pairs of sides congruent and also all three angles, corresponding uh, pairs of angles that are congruent in order for the shapes to also be congruent. So all the parts of one figure are congruent with the corresponding parts of the other figure. And you remember what corresponding means in the same relative position. In congruent polygons, this means that the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles are congruent. And then we can say that in a nice simple way <clears throat> by saying triangle, for example, between these two triangles here, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED. And the order that we put these letters is important because what we're saying is that, um, that angle A is congruent to angle F. So we take the first letter of the the first designation and that corresponds to the first letter in the other designation. And is that the case? You see, yes it is. Uh, here we have angle A is congruent to angle F. And we know that not just, because, not just because I put the color red there, but also because there's an arc, a single arc. And I have emphasized that in mind. And also angle B is congruent to angle E, and that's the case here. And you see how they des designate that here? They put two arcs. They could have put uh, one tick mark in this arc and then had a single arc up here and put two tick marks there, but they chose instead to put two arcs. So there's different designations, different ways of saying the same thing. And then also this one uh, a statement here also tells us that angle C is congruent to angle D. And we see that indicated on our diagram here because there are three arcs on both of these. But not only are, like we said, not only are the corresponding angles congruent, also 
the corresponding sides are congruent. So, uh, looking at uh, the diagram here, uh, angle, I'm sorry, side AB is congruent to side FE. And we can say that, see that on our diagram because there's a single uh, tick mark here. And then also, um, and let me show you how on the diagram, or on the, the statement here, it's saying angle AB, so the, the first and second um, letters, the uh, uh, segment between those two is congruent to uh, segment FE, the first and second. Okay, we got that. And also you could say that segment BC, going from the second to the third, is congruent to segment ED. And we see that uh, here, these two segments are congruent to each other because both of them have three tick marks on them. And then we can swing around and say that segment CA, going from the third back to the first, is congruent to segment DF. And we see that true on our diagram. Segment CA is congruent to segment DF uh, because both have two tick marks on it. So this one statement here, this one statement is saying a whole lot of information. It's telling us that all three corresponding angles are congruent, and here's here, and all three corresponding sides are congruent. Now this one statement, we could say that in different ways. We could also say, instead of saying ABC, we could say BCA. See how the order is different? The starting with the second, and then the third, and then the, the first, that's okay, as long as we also change the orientation or the sequence of the second one. So if we're going to say BCA, then we need to say EDF, and in fact that's what they did, EDF. And we could also say uh, CBA, you can go backwards if you wanted to, triangle CBA is congruent to triangle DEF. Right? That's okay. Whatever order you want to do, or whatever uh, sequence you want to do, as long as it's the same sequence with uh, the other uh, triangle. Okay. So, let's apply this uh, information that we're, we are learning to a particular problem <clears throat> to get you ready to be able to do uh, your problems here uh, in your notes. So, example number two in your book. Uh, in the diagram, so this would be a quadrilateral because it has four sides, or we could just say polygon. D, E, F, G is congruent to polygon S, P, Q, R. And so let's see, then the first one, uh, the uh, angle D, they're telling us then, is congruent to angle S. So angle D. Angle D here is congruent to angle S. Aha! Uh -huh. So this orientation does not match. In other words, angle D is not congruent to angle Q, which we can see rather obviously. But fr especially from this uh, statement, uh, we know that angle D is congruent, congruent to angle S. So we would have to rotate this. How many degrees would we be rotating this to put this in the same orientation as this one? looks like it would be 90 and then 180 degrees. So if we rotate this guy 180 degrees, it looks like it would be in the correct orientation with each other. So they want us to find the value of x. So where is x? Here is x up on the top here. So that is the length of segment QR. The length of segment QR. So that's the third and the fourth. It's going to put up on top there, the third and the fourth uh, letters. So that is going to correspond to segment FG. So what do I know about segment FG over here? Uh, that's this dude on the bottom. Okay, so if I was to rotate this around, you can see how uh, this top part here would correspond to this bottom part on the left-hand side. So what we can say then is that these two sides are congruent with each other and therefore their lengths are equal. And therefore we can, yeah, that's what they're saying here, therefore we can say that 12, this length here, is equal to 2x minus 4. 
12 equals 2x minus 4. And then from there, this is just a simple algebra problem for us. We just add 4 to both sides and then divide both sides by 2. And we have our answer of x equals 2. They want us also to find the value of y. So where is y? Here is y. <clears throat> so that is the, the measure of angle Q. So what angle corresponds to angle Q? Well, I can look at this statement here again. And here is angle Q. It is the third angle that is being mentioned. So that angle is going to be congruent to the third one that's mentioned over here. So one, two, three. So angle Q is congruent to angle F. And let's see if that makes sense. Angle Q is congruent to angle F. So if I was to rotate this around, that would be 90 degrees and then 180 degrees. Yep, that would match with uh, angle F here. So these two angles are congruent to each other. So therefore, I can uh, equate them. The measure of those two angles is going to be equal. So I can say 68 equals 6y plus x. And first they're doing it with the units. They're saying 68 degrees equals 6y minus x degrees. And then we can strip off the degrees and just look at the numbers and then solve this as an algebra problem. By what would you do? Oh, I see what they're doing. They're plugging in uh, 8 in for x, so substitution property. And then they'd be able to solve this equation for uh, y by subtracting 8 from both sides and then uh, dividing both sides by 6. And that'll give you your answer of y equals 10. Okay, if that was, if I went too quickly through that, then uh, back up the video a little bit and, uh, or think it through yourself and then look, uh, listen to my explanation again if you need to. So here on your notes, what you need to do, and remember, it's essential that you do this. Don't just write down what I say and what I write down. That's of no use to me or to you. Think about what I'm saying and then do the problem yourself. So I, I've kind of started you off here. The first, they, they first of all give us a statement, a congruence statement, that A, B, G, H is congruent to C, D, E, F. So what are they saying? A is, angle A is congruent to angle C. Here's angle A. Here's angle A, and here is angle C, and then angle B is congruent to angle D. So B is congruent to angle D. Okay, I got it. So if I was to rotate this a positive 90 degrees, remember uh, positive is counterclockwise, uh, then it would be in the same orientation as this one here on the left. So they want us to identify all the pairs of congruent corresponding parts. Congruent corresponding parts. And you remember that there are corresponding angles that are congruent and corresponding sides. So I went ahead and listed the, the angles on the left figure. And then you have to give me what angle corresponds to angle A. And it is congruent, therefore, to angle A. And what uh, angle corresponds to and is congruent to angle B, and so forth. And then do the same thing with the sides. So angle A, I'm sorry, segment AB is congruent to what segment? So you can do that either, either by uh, rotating this in your mind and saying, okay, segment AB is congruent to segment CD, if I was to rotate that around. Or you can say segment AB, hey, that's the first two letters being mentioned. So therefore, it's going to be the first two letters mentioned on this one. So segment AB is congruent to segment CD. All right, that makes sense, doesn't it? That these two guys are congruent to each other. And you keep on going around and um, tell me what the other uh, con um, sides <laughs> that are congruent uh, to these. Okay, I'll let you do that. So go ahead and pause the video and do that, please. Okay, so did you pause the visio video? Don't just say, oh, I'll do it later. No, do it now. The way of the sluggard is a hedge of thorns. Do things the easy way. Do it now while, you're, while it's clear on your mind. And then number two, 
find the value of x. Where is x? There is x. So x is the measure of angle h. And so what angle corresponds to angle h? It's angle f. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. So these two guys correspond to each other and are therefore congruent. So set these equal to each other and solve it for uh, x to be able to find uh, the value of x. I would do that work over here if you want to. And then also find the measure. Remember how to say that? The measure of angle h. So here is angle h. So how would you find the measure of angle h? Well, it's pretty obvious. You just, once you uh, solve for h, I'm sorry, once you solve for x, then plug it into uh, this expression. And you should get something that looks familiar and that you see already on uh, this figure. And then tell me why. Do you know why? Why are those the same number? Let's see if you can figure this out. Now for number three, um, let me just explain to you uh, why uh, triangle PTS, PTS is congruent to triangle RTQ. Now, in order for these triangles to be congruent, remember, uh, same shape and same size, and all of the corresponding parts are going to be congruent to each other. So we already know that uh, this uh, segment PT is, or side PT is congruent to side uh, TR. We got the double tick marks. And also that side ST is congruent to side, side TQ because I have those three triple congruent marks. And also these sides are congruent with each other. So I have all three pairs of corresponding sides that I'm told are congruent to each other. But how about angles? Well, are these two angles congruent to each other? They correspond to each other. That makes sense. But are they congruent? And the answer is yes. What is the relationship between these two angles? They are vertical angles, and all vertical angles are congruent. Okay, we got those two, that pair. How about uh, this pair of congruent angles? Are these guys congruent to each other? And the answer is yes, because look at this. Hey, these are two lines run alongside of each other. So how do we do this? Here's two lines run alongside of each other. And then you have this third line that's cutting across that, creating these two angles. Hey, what is that third line called? that crosses over the first two lines. You're right, this is a transversal. And so here, these two angles here, are they on the same side or alternate sides of the transversal? They're alternate sides. And are they interior or exterior? And they are interior. Hey, so these two angles are alternate interior angles. And are, what is true about alternate interior angles? They are congruent. No, 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 wait a second. They are only congruent when these two lines are what? These two lines are parallel.